Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you uh, to the fourth lecture of uh, this NPTEL MOOC, MOOC course, Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, this is overall fourth lecture, but this is the first lecture for module 2. So, in today's lecture, we will talk about you know the relationship between stress and health. So, stress and health will be covered in two lectures. So, in one lecture, we will talk about uh, the relationship between stress and uh, non-infectious diseases and we will talk about in the next lecture, the relationship between uh, stress and infectious diseases. So, we will have two lectures under this title. So, obviously, today we will talk about uh, the, uh, the stress and health particularly in the context of uh, stress and non-infectious diseases. So, before we talk about today's lecture, let us have a brief recap of uh, last lecture that is lecture 3 uh, of module 1. So, in the last lecture, we talked about the physiological aspect of aspects of stress. Uh, basically, we try to understand how the experience of stress you know causes various physiological changes in the body. So, in that context, we have discussed uh, the fight or flight response which we have this is also called as acute stress response where we try to find whenever we discussed that you know whenever we experience stress the immediate reaction of the body is fight or flight where the body gets aroused and you know there are you know uh, certain symptoms in terms of increase in heart rate perspiration etc uh, and the body gets extra energy to deal with you know various threats and dangers in the environment so, this is a natural response that we all experience whenever we experience stress or threat in the environment. Uh, we have also discussed uh, uh, general adaptation syndrome. So, in the general adaptation syndrome, we, uh, we discussed how our body responds to both short term as well as, well as long term stress. Uh, and we have discussed there are three stages in which the body goes or body kinds of experiences uh, you know certain changes uh, when they encounter stressful circumstances. So, we have discussed alarm reaction stage, resistance stage and then you know exhaustion stage. Then we have discussed you know uh, how stress is connected to the brain and body particularly in, in terms of physiological reactions. Uh, in that we have discussed you know uh, particularly you know that uh, whenever we experience stress you know um, amygdala is activated and then it it uh, further activates hypothalamus which then activates two pathways uh, one is called as you know uh, SAM pathway and another is called as HPA system or SAM system. So, there are two pathways by which you know body kinds of response to stressful experiences. In the same system basically which is called as sympathetic adrenal medullary system uh, where you know body uh, activates the medulla or the inner part of adrenal gland and which uh, secretes uh, adrenaline, non-adrenaline uh, hormones which has then further other implications in the body. Uh, similarly, hypothalamus also activates uh, HPA system which is called hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical system which activates cort uh, cortex of the adrenal gland and it releases hormones such as cortisol. So, these hormones are released in the response to various stressful experiences and they have many consequences in the body. Then we have also discussed the connection between stress and brain and we have discussed stress particularly you know. Uh, 
influences two parts of the brain that is one is called as hippocampus and another is prefrontal cortex. Hippocampus is mainly responsible for you know learning, memory emo and emotions. Prefrontal cortex is uh, primarily responsible for you know a higher cognitive functions or, or executive functions such as you know regulating thoughts and emotions, decision making etc. So, stress can influence these two parts and adversely impact these functions. We have also discussed gender differences in the stress response particularly in the fight and flight response. So, uh, some research suggests that obviously fight and uh, flight response is kind of universal, but females are more likely to show, show another kind of little bit different response which is called as you know tend and befriend response where you know in the tend section basically under stressful circumstances. Uh, the females are more likely to show nurturing activities uh, for protecting offsprings and dependents uh, in order to reduce stress and protect the dependents. In the befriend uh, uh, concept basically uh, the females are more likely to you know, create and maintain a social network for protection and reducing stress. And we have discussed this may have evolutionary reason why it happens that you know. Uh, because females are more uh, you know, uh, likely uh, if they were given the role of protection of offspring throughout the history and fight and flight response may not be very conducive for such functions. So, tend and befriend probably is an evolutionary functions for protection of species. So, these are some of the major concepts that we have discussed in the, in the last lecture. Uh, today, we will talk about uh, some of the major concepts such as uh, we will talk about historical background of stress and health research, how stress is connected to uh, health and we will see some of the historical you know antecedents of research particularly uh, how research evolve in terms of finding this relationship. Then we will also discuss you know uh, various pathways uh, linking stress and health, what are the mechanism by which stress influences our health particularly physical health. And then we will discuss uh, stress and non-infectious diseases in particular and we will see some of the examples of it in today's lecture. So, let us start. Now, the stress in itself is, uh, is not an illness because it is more like a response of the body. So, it is a natural response of the body. So, this itself is not an illness. However, it is more an unpleasant experience, particularly we experience negative emotions. However, uh, the various research have shown that you know stressful experiences can lead to various physical and mental illnesses or conditions. So, in itself it is not a problem, but when we experience it too much or especially the chronic stress. Uh, it may lead to various other uh, both uh, diseases both physical as well as uh, mental uh, illnesses. We have already discussed there are many staggering statistics associated with the adverse impact of stress you know. Uh, in the context of health also we have such statistics. Now, some surveys shows that you know stress is the number one threat for health in the US and about 70 to 90 percent of doctors visit are related to stress. So, uh, uh, there are so many such statistics. Uh, so, this is not just for the US context, but uh, it is true for most of the other countries also. Now, this relationship between stress and health you know uh, can be explained primarily from the context of uh, the mind body connection. When we talk about mind body connection you know uh, the idea is, is, is that you know uh, the mind and body are not two separate entities you know they are continuously influence each other. Uh, for, uh, if you look at historically you know 17th century French philosopher uh, Descartes kind of proposed the idea of mind body dualism. So, where he proposed that mind and body are two separate entities. However, you know recent uh, researches clearly indicates beyond doubt that mind and body are not two separate entities rather they are very closely connected to each other. 
and continuously influence each other. So, and uh, in that context, in the mind-body connection, there are many, you know, areas of studies have been established and they are flourishing. Uh, we have mind-body medicine, we have health psychology. All these are primarily, you know, psychoneuroimmunology. All these areas are based on the foundation of mind-body connections, you know, and, you know, people are trying to understand uh, from the diverse perspective how mind-body interacts and what are the consequences of it, what kinds of therapies and, you know, uh, medications can be developed based on these ideas. So, the modern research, it is kind of beyond doubt that there are a strong connection between mind and body and they are not seen as a separate functioning entities, you know, but as one functioning unit. So, mind and emotions are viewed as, you know, influencing the body and as the body in turn can influence our mind and emotions. So, this is the basic idea between in, in the concept of mind body connections. Furthermore, when we discussed the physiology of stress in the last lecture, it was evident, you know, how mind and body is very strongly and closely connected to each other. Uh, because we have seen when we experience men, stress at the mind, at the mental level and how the mental experience of stress, you know, influence our body in so many ways and leads to the release of various hormones and impact our bodies, the various organs of the body such as heart and other uh, and endocrine glands directly uh, because of our mental experiences of the stress. So, the, this was very evident in the uh, you know, discussion of in the last lecture particularly when we discussed uh, the relationship between uh, the, the biology of the stress. Now, in terms of this mind body connection obviously, you know, uh, we need to understand uh, the concept of psychosomatic diseases. Now, so psychosomatic diseases are basically physical diseases uh, that are caused or deteriorated by mental factors such as stress, anxiety, depression, etc. So, this is, these are category of disease where the symptoms are in the body but causal reasons could be in the mind. So, the idea of the, the basically these are two terms, one is called psychosomatic. So, if you look at it, so psycho is basically you know connected with the mind, somatic is connected with the body, soma is basically means body. So, the psychosomatic diseases are basically, you know, uh, such diseases where, you know, mental uh, factors plays very important role in terms of expression of physical symptoms of diseases. So, uh, research is very clearly shows this bi-directional relationship between the body and the mind and uh, the psychosomatic diseases are an expression of that relationship. Uh, so, psychosomatic diseases involve both mind and body and uh, it refers to physical symptoms uh, that arise from or influenced by the mind and emotions rather than specific organic cause such as injury. So, there are uh, in such diseases there may not be very specific organic reason in the body such as injury in the body or in the body parts, uh, but these may be caused by the mental factors. So, when we talk about uh, uh, psychosomatic diseases, you know, we need to understand that also there are mental aspects in various physic, uh, in the physical diseases. For example, you know, uh, how we react to a disease, whenever a physical disease happens to your body, how you react to that disease, how you cope with that disease uh, can differ from person to person. So, there are mental factors associated with every physical disease in a general sense apart from these causal reasons in the psychosomatic diseases. So, for example, you know, uh, skin diseases or rashes in the body part can influence people particularly, you know, faces and uh, other body parts particularly, you know, it can influence our reactions, uh, you know, very strongly. 
and obviously you know whenever we have mental illnesses it may have physical connections to it in the sense that you know you know certain mental illnesses such as de depression people you know stop eating uh, they stop taking care of themselves so this may further cause other physical diseases or worsen the existing diseases so this is a clear bidirectional relationship so so every physical disease has a mental aspects and the mental diseases has some physical aspects to it so psychosomatic diseases we need to understand in that context uh, and particularly some of the uh, physical diseases are very strongly you know connected with the mental factors you know for example uh, skin diseases um, stomach ulcers high blood pressure and you know heart diseases so we'll look into uh, some of them in more detail so in fact a branch of psychological health psychology has evolved you know primarily to understand the psychosomatic aspects of diseases and it investigates the role of psychological factors such as stress emotion beliefs etc on our physical health and illnesses so we have a whole branch of study on based on the psychosomatic aspects of diseases and uh, it clearly reflects how important mental factors are in physical diseases particularly you know experience such as stress now if you look at the historical background of psychosomatic diseases you know there are some of the uh, important landmarks we can find uh, we can discuss so claudy bernard in 1878 uh, he used the term dynamic equilibrium to understand the diseases so basically he says uh, the dynamic equilibrium is the stability or consistency of the inner environment so at the physiological level uh, whether your body is stable consistent or at the equilibrium stage so that equilibrium basically shows your healthy state so if that equilibrium state is kind of disturbed uh, such disturbances may adversely affect our body and may cause diseases so this was one of the uh, first concept in terms of understanding you know psychosomatic diseases proposed by bernard then in walter cannon in 1929 uh, he used another term called homeostasis as an extension of dynamic equilibrium concept of bernard uh, by homeostasis he meant almost same thing uh, uh, so basically uh, he is talking about the maintenance of a constant inner condition is homeostasis so maintenance of homeostasis of the body is basically maintaining a constant inner conditions of the body uh, for ex but some experience such as stress which may lead to fight and flight response disturbs this homeostasis and you know can lead to diseases so basically uh, bernard said you know uh, that maintenance of life is basically dependent on this uh, maintaining of homeostasis in our body so this is very crucial for uh, maintenance of life uh, so he uh, uh, hansel he used the term to represent this effect that you know uh, stress is a condition that disturbs that homeostasis basically and may lead may lead to various uh, diseases then obviously hans selly uh, who did lot of research in uh, 60s 70s um, uh, on stress uh, he proposed as we have already discussed the concept of general adaptation syndrome where he described a physiological response of the body both short term and long term uh, in terms of you uh, know stress both acute stress as well as chronic stress so he discussed alarm stage 
which is more like you know activation of fight and flight and activation of sympathetic part of autonomic nervous system resistance stage was associated with release of cortisol and very other stress hormones particularly cortisol from the hp axis in the exhaustion stage was basically associated with various diseases of adaptation uh, which were pretty particularly called as psychosomatic diseases so this uh, exhaustion stage uh, where you no know, people the resistance of the body you know is minimized and sometimes it may collapse and as a result uh, body kinds of uh, expresses this you know decrease of resistance in terms of various diseases which are called as psychosomatic diseases or called as diseases of adaptation so hence all these kinds of you know uh, then you know further elaborated on this idea of psychosomatic diseases uh, recently you know an, a whole branch of study evolved which is called as uh, psycho neuroimmunology uh, which is in short called as pni uh, it's a field of study uh, based on this uh, mind body connection uh, which revealed that there is a constant interaction between our central nervous system and immune system and obviously central nervous system is influenced by our mental processes so our mental processes can influence our nervous system which can influence the body's immune system so uh, many studies uh, indicated that psychological factors such as stress can influence our central nervous system and which in turn can influence our immune system so uh, this area of study is clearly kind of evolving this whole idea of uh, psychosomatic diseases and uh, playing very important role so we'll look into uh, this Uh, so this particular branch of study uh, in more detail in the next lecture uh, when we'll talk about uh, stress and infectious diseases where we'll specifically look into the connection between stress and immune system now uh, we have kind of tried to understand and gave you an historical background about the psychosomatic diseases and how stress can cause as well as worsen the physical disease worsen physical diseases now we'll talk about what are the pathways that can link stress and health what is the mechanism by which uh, stressful experiences can influence our physical health so this is a diagrammatic uh, representation of mechanisms so here you can see uh, there are two pathways by which uh, stress can influence physical health or illnesses one is stress particularly the distress part or the negative experiences of the stress can directly influence our physiological reactions of the body or physiological uh, mechanisms which include uh, sympathetic nervous system and neuroendocrine system and we have already you know looked into that part in detail in the last last lecture stress may also influence our immune system uh, this will uh, discuss in more detail in the next lecture so by influencing our physiology particularly nervous system endocrine system and immune system stress can cause physical illnesses this is the one pathway the second pathway is stress can influence our behavioral reactions or responses particularly our react behavior may change under stressful circumstances such as changes in the health practices or lifestyles changes in the adherence to medical advices so we'll look more detail into that part also so many behavioral changes may be associated with the stressful experiences which may further worsen uh, the diseases 
So, these are two pathways basically you know uh, that you can uh, uh, we can we uh, at least literature shows that uh, through these two pathways stress influences physical health. So, basically more simpler form if I uh, show you it could be shown like this. So, this is more simpler form by which we can uh, kind of understand the mechanisms. So, there are two pathways physiological changes and behavioral changes in response to stress can lead to physical illnesses. Now, stress can influence or cause both infectious as well as non-infectious diseases. So, if you look at uh, physical diseases, uh, broadly we can categorize them into infectious or communicable diseases or and non-infectious or non-communicable diseases. So, stress can lead to both infectious and non-infectious diseases. Uh, infectious diseases occur due to attack from an external agent such as bacteria, viruses. So, primarily it comes from outside and it, it can be transmitted from one person to another person uh, because the agents are bacteria and viruses that can transfer from one person to another person. So, that is why uh, they are also called as communicable diseases. Uh, Non-infectious diseases on the other hand uh, occur primarily because of internal factors such as wear and tear or malfunctioning in certain organs of the body and these are not transmitted from one person to another person. So, therefore, they are also called as non-communicable diseases. So, basically these are some malfunctions in the organs of the body. So, so we have various diseases such as you know the heart diseases, diabetes. So, these are all non-communicable or non-infectious diseases. So, flu you know is a probably it could be a communicable disease because it can be it is caused by you know germs such as viruses. So, stress can influence or cause both categories of these diseases. The today's lecture will primarily focus on non-communicable diseases and how stress is connected to that. Now, it was evident that you know physiological response to stress is very complex and we do not know everything about it, uh, but what we understand is primarily it is done by two pathways, one is SAM system and one is HPA system and the both the system releases end up releasing uh, hormones such as you know adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol etcetera. Now, the question is uh, this is the physiology primary physiological mechanism. Now, the question is how the secretion of these hormones or stress hormones can lead to both infectious as well as non infectious diseases. So, this is the question we will try to understand today we will try to understand non infectious diseases part. So, stress can contribute to the development of diverse non-infectious diseases that were earlier believed pure as purely physiological in origin such as cardiovascular diseases. So, these diseases were primarily uh, earlier people used to think their origin is primarily physiological or in the body, uh, but uh, recent researches clearly show you know it 
such diseases can be contributed by mental factor in a very large way. Uh, so, they are kind of psychosomatic diseases. So, there are staggering statistics associated with uh, st stress and you know the diseases particularly you know non-infectious diseases. Uh, for example, you know I will just uh, you know read out some of these findings. So, stress related non-communicable diseases or NCDs such as coronary heart diseases, diabetes, coronary pulmonary diseases, neuropsychiatric diseases etcetera are the major health crises in the 21st century you know because they are major reason for deaths related to various physical diseases. So, they are causing major crises in the 21st century in terms of disease management. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC Division of Global Health Protection, the NCDs or non-communicable diseases are responsible for more than 68 percent of deaths worldwide and 75 percent of deaths in low and middle income countries. So, you can understand the huge inf impact such diseases have on in the lives of people and they are mostly caused by factors such as stress. NCDs are generally uh, preceded by stress related metabolic problems such as hypertension, high cholesterol, reduced responsiveness to insulin. So, all these metabolic changes happens by the stress and they ultimately causes all these non-communicable diseases uh, particularly you know, psychosomatic diseases. So, reduced responsiveness to insulin leads may lead to diabetes, high cholesterol may lead to heart diseases, you know, high blood pressure lead to high hypertension. So, all these are uh, metabolic changes are caused by stress related factors and they may further lead to uh, various non-communicable diseases. Uh, stress related chronic non-communicable diseases continue to plague primary care practitioners resulting in enormous mortality, morbidity and suffering and contributes to the expanding of healthcare cost. So, they are huge burden on the primary healthcare system and overall disease burden of various countries. Uh, so, these are major chunk of diseases that we all experience and interestingly you know they are all influenced by uh, may be influenced very strongly by stress related factors. So, let us uh, talk now more about specifically about cardiovascular disease because this is one category of disease where stress seems to play most important role. So, cardiovascular system basically includes heart, blood and blood vessels and it is primarily regulated by autonomic nervous system. So, now you can understand the connection no? because these are regulated by autonomic nervous system and autonomic nervous system can be influenced by stress. So, cardiovascular diseases uh, are the leading cause of death globally and causing an estimate of 17.9 million lives each year. This is in statistics given by WHO in this year only. So, cardiovascular disease are really a huge category of disease uh, you know that are causing uh, one of the largest death globally. So, disease related to cardiovascular system primarily include coronary artery diseases, coronary heart diseases and hypertension. So, primarily heart diseases and uh, hypertension or high blood pressure uh, are included under cardiovascular diseases. Now, coronary heart disease uh, develops uh, particularly you know when our heart arteries of the heart or the blood vessels that supply oxygen and blood to the heart. So, the vessels that are connected to the heart 
uh, which are called as arteries uh, when they become narrow due to fatty deposits or deposits of the cholesterol in those arterial wall and as a result blood is not able to freely flow from the heart and to the heart and this is called as atherosclerosis so so we will also look little bit more deeper into that also so this is the primary reasons uh, one of the primary reason for heart disease uh, that is the blockage in the artery by the cholesterol or fatty deposits uh, hypertension on the other hand is basically you know high blood pressure uh, it, it is a condition in which you know the force of the blood basically you know against the wall of the artery generally becomes higher than the normal situation and uh, it can lead to heart diseases strokes kidney diseases etc sometimes death also so and for example the ideal blood pressure is generally considered you know the normal blood pressure is between 90 by 60 mmig basically means millimeter of mercury this is the unit of measuring uh, you know, blood pressure so 90 by 62 120 by 80 mmig is the normal range of blood pressure uh, anything above that is considered higher particularly you know if it is 140 by 90 mmig or more can be considered as hypertension so basically you know these two counts are one is the top count is basically systolic uh, blood pressure and one is called diastolic blood pressure so systolic blood pressure is basically when uh, heart beats you measure the pressure of the blood and diastolic is when heart is not beating so 90 by 60 means one is 96 uh, systolic and 60 is diastolic measure so how uh, stress contributes to cardiovascular diseases particularly heart disease so all obviously the mechanisms are very complex and it is still not very clear uh, however there are many possible pathways that have been linked with cardiovascular disease and the stress uh, one is uh, the experience of stress can cause high levels of physiological arousal leading to erratic and rapid heartbeats uh, which can cause stroke cardiac arrest or even death of the person especially to individuals with pre-existing heart conditions or diseases so one thing is very clear immediately with the experience of stress the heart beats get faster especially the under the fight and flight response uh, heart beat becomes very erratic and faster and you know and when it is experienced again and again can cause wear and tear in the system particularly in the muscles of the heart uh, due to repeated fight and uh, flight response and can cause uh, heart related problems so this could be one direct mechanisms where how stress can directly cause you know, heart related issues by particularly causing wear and tear in the system due to repeated fight and flight responses another uh, way by which you know stress stress is connected to heart diseases is through stress hormones which are released uh, during uh, stressful situations so this cortisol epinephrine norepinephrine so these are stress hormones now research have shown that this stress hormones actually promotes atherosclerosis so we have discussed basically it basically means it blocks the arteries uh, by increasing you know cholesterol level uh, by increasing the build up of fatty patches or plaques on the arterial wall which uh, cause which leads to the narrowing down of the artery so artery is narrowed down because of build up of plaques and fatty patches patches in the arterial wall this narrow artery decreases the blood flow resulting in the increase of the blood pressure 
this decreases the blood flow causes less oxygen flow to the heart muscles which may result in chest pain which is also called angina and heart attack so stress hormones can promote atherosclerosis uh, which ultimately you know can block the arterial wall and increase the blood pressure by decreasing the flow of the blood and less oxygen in the heart so arterial wall and how this you know build up can be you know i will just show you how this is basically uh, you know so for example let's say this is a cross section of the artery and this is kind of you no know, the cross section of that arterial wall so this is a normal arterial opening of the artery uh, but when atherosclerosis happens you know uh, this fatty cholesterol sort of patches kind of gets build up you know around this artery and as a result the area uh, area of for the flow of the blood decreases which further increases the blood pressure so this is how you know kind of atherosclerosis happens in the arterial wall there is another uh, symptoms which is also connected to stress and heart disease it is called as broken heart syndrome now stress can cause broken heart syndrome uh, and it is more prominent among women following stressful or traumatic events so according to john hopkins medicines website how they defined this syndrome is that you know the broken heart syndrome is a condition in which intense emotional or physical stress can cause rapid and severe heart muscle weakness so with the increase of the stress you know heart beat so fast or particularly if it is a very traumatic highly stressful event suddenly the heart beat increases so fast that it weakens the muscles of the heart which is technically called as uh, cardiomyopathy so with stress cardi or the cardiomyopathy we believe that heart muscle is overwhelmed by a massive amount of adrenaline a release of adrenaline uh, that is suddenly produced in response to stress so suddenly there is a high intensity of stress and there is too much of stress hormone and too much of erratic movement in the heart uh, which can overwhelm the heart functioning of the heart the precise way in which adrenaline affects the heart is unknown uh, but it may cause narrowing of the arteries that supply the heart with blood causing a temporary decrease in the blood flow of the heart so it is possible that you know that kind of shrinks temporarily because of this erratic movements and the effect of adrenaline and as a result you know uh, you experience a kind of symptoms of heart attack now this broken heart symptom is an basically a stress induced symptom can happen to a normal and a healthy person so according to the american heart association website uh, women are more likely than men to experience sudden intense chest pain uh, the react which is basically reaction to a surge of sudden surge of you know stress hormones uh, it could be due to death of a loved ones you know suddenly you hear about such traumatic events or even a divorce breakup or physical separation betrayal or romantic rejection those these are some of the traumatic events for example in response to such events uh, you know broken heart syndrome can happen because these are very traumatic and stressful event sometimes it could even 
happen after a good shock, let's say, no? suddenly winning a lottery. So, it can also overwhelm your physiological response. So, broken heart syndrome may be misdiagnosed as a heart attack. So, it is not exactly heart attack because the symptom is very similar to heart attack. Uh, but in heart attack uh, happens primarily because of blockage of the artery by you know, cholesterols and other plaques. So, generally it happens you know uh, due to blockage of the artery, uh, but uh, you know broken heart symptoms may not be connected with the blockage, but it may happen suddenly. So, it can happen to a healthy person uh, in response to a highly traumatic event. Now, uh, another important connection between uh, stress and uh, you know, heart diseases is uh, the connection between stress and cholesterol. Now, stress can increase bad cholesterol. So, there are two types of cholesterol, one is called as bad cholesterol and another is called as good cholesterol. So, bad cholesterol is basically you know called as LDL or low density lipoproteins and good cholesterols are called as high density lipoproteins or HDL. So, stress can increase the bad cholesterol level of the body directly or indirectly through directly by stimulating production in the body or indirectly through unhealthy behaviors such as you know eating unhealthy foods. So, uh, for example, uh, there are many empirical evidences to that. Um, a study by you know Catalina Romario and his colleagues in 2013, they collected data from uh, more than 91,000 participants and found a positive correlation between those who experienced high job stress and bad cholesterol level in their body. So, those who have experienced higher stress in their life, uh, their blood cholesterol is particularly uh, the bad cholesterol level in their blood was much higher than the people who experienced less stress. Another study by Asadi 2017 found that psychological stress can lead to higher levels of bad cholesterol uh, which are basically low density lipoproteins and decrease good cholesterol. So, it can function in both ways by increasing bad cholesterol level and decreasing high good cholesterol level. Now, stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol can trigger the production of cholesterol, you know, which is basically cholesterol is a kind of uh, waxy and fatty substance produced by the liver and it is produced primarily to give you extra energy during the stressful circumstances. However, when it is released too much, because of excessive stress experiences, there may be too much of excess cholesterol on excess energy when it is not used may get accumulated in the body as fats and excess cholesterol can clog the arteries or block the arteries uh, and basically you know it can cause to atherosclerosis and which ultimately cause May, may cause heart diseases or heart attacks. So, this is one uh, basically direct mechanism so, and obviously another uh, way is stress can induce various behavioral changes particularly eating behaviors and eatings of unhealthy foods such as carbohydrate uh, which may further increase cholesterol levels in the body. So, through this mechanism stress can influence your uh, cholesterol level in the body which uh, particularly the bad cholesterol which can then further lead to uh, heart diseases. Another important uh, connection between uh, stress and uh, heart diseases is through personality trait. Two researcher or heart uh, doctors uh, named Friedman and Rosenman in 1974 uh, they suggested that people with certain personality characteristics or traits are more predisposed or more vulnerable to suffer from stress than other people because uh, there are uh, different you know, characteristics of personality. 
So consequently, they are more likely to have heart disease because they are more likely to experience stress in their life. So in that context, they identify two personality traits. One is called as type A people and type B people. So type A personality trait, type B personality trait. So what are uh, uh, they try to find out uh, these two types of people by asking simple questions such as uh, do you feel guilty if you use spare time to relax? Do you need to win in order to derive enjoyment from game and sports? Do you always need to win to derive enjoyment? Do you generally move, walk and eat rapidly? Do you often try to do more than one thing at a time? So these are some of the sample questions. Obviously, you know, it had many more questions and uh, they asked such questions and if your answer is yes to this kind of questions, you are more likely to be type A personality. What happens? What are the characteristics of type A people? So they found that type A people, they show excessive competitiveness and achievement orientation, uh, which lead to extreme self criticism. They also criticize themselves too much. They have excessive competitiveness in their mind and they are highly achievement oriented people. Uh, they have an exaggerated sense of time urgency uh, which leads to constant struggle against the clock and a compulsion to try to do more than one thing at a time. So time urgency, excessive competitiveness, achievement orientation. Then the third factor is anger, hostility that may or may not be openly expressed. So these are the three important or the prime characteristics of type A people and type B people show opposite characteristics. Basically, you know, they are very easy going and much less demanding of self and others and they do not have exaggerated sense of time urgency. So type B people are more relaxed kind of people, type A people uh, because of this nature, uh, they are more likely to be stressed most of the time in their life. So these are two different types of people you know that there, there is nothing wrong in being type A or type B. Uh, these are only uh, the different types of people, different psychological makeup. So this Friedman and Rosenman conducted a longitudinal study which basically means uh, studying a group of people over a period of time uh, for eight and a half years with a sample of 3524 men and men uh, which were aged between 39 to 59 years and they found that type A individuals were twice as likely to develop coronary heart disease than type B individuals primarily due to higher physiological reactivity of type A people than type B people. So the type A characteristics makes these people more vulnerable for heart diseases primarily because of uh, their psychological makeup, they are more likely to experience stress and physiological reactivity, uh, which may increase the risk of heart disease. But that does not mean type A people will automatically experience heart disease, but they are more likely to experience heart diseases and because of their uh, the nature, inbuilt nature and personality trait. Uh, they are more likely to experience stress and we know stress can in, you know, increase the chances of heart disease. Now later research indicated that only some aspects of type A behavior particularly the anger and hostility are more important in terms of understanding heart disease. So other aspects may not be that strongly connected to heart disease but anger and hostility are particularly more strongly connected to heart diseases. Some research also indicated that you know particularly anger which is suppressed some people you know when they are angry they kind of suppressed it and it kind of gets accumulated in the system in the physiology of the system such suppressed anger is more significantly uh, the risk factor for higher physiological reactivity and coronary heart disease. It was also reported that individuals who suppress their anger are twice vulnerable to mortality than the expressed anger. So, uh, so it may not be all the characteristics of the type A people, but some 
characteristics particularly the anger and the suppressed anger could be more important in terms of causing uh, heart diseases. Now, the last thing that we will discuss is basically the behavioral pathways. So, obviously, uh, the stress cause uh, non-infectious diseases one is through physiological responses that we have discussed and now there is another way that it can uh, cause you know, non-infectious non diseases is through behavioral pathways. So, stress can adversely affect health by increasing the frequency of unhealthy behaviors. So, under stressful circumstances people are more likely to behave or involve into unhealthy behaviors and healthy behaviors are likely to decrease or by disrupting prescribed healthy behaviors pattern. So, under stressful circumstances all these things can be disrupted. So, frequency of unhealthy behavior may increase, frequency of healthy behavior may decrease or healthy behaviors patterns may be disrupted by stressful circumstances of life. All this may ultimately can cause further complications in the physical diseases. So, stress may induce many behavioral changes and disruptions in lifestyles and routines. Some of the common findings are, for example, changes include uh, disturbances in sleep, which is very strongly connected with the stressful experiences, uh, disturbances in food intake, unhealthy food, overeating, excessive smoking or other addictive behaviors may increase physical inactivity also increase under stressful circumstances. Uh, people may involve into excessive drinking of alcohol, drugs, etc. So, all such behaviors uh, are problematic we all know and especially for, for people with pre-existing illnesses such as heart diseases uh, can further complicate the physical diseases and uh, worsen their, those symptoms and cause also physical diseases. Uh, so, these are the behavioral pathways uh, through which you know uh, stress can influence our uh, influence non-infectious diseases. So, this so we can understand it is very complex and there are many possible mechanisms, but at least we try to understand some of the major pathways by which you know stress is connected to uh, non-infectious diseases or non-communicable diseases. Uh, next lecture, we uh, will talk about how stress is connected to infectious diseases or specifically how it is linked to immune system. So, with this uh, I end today's lecture. Thank you.